Welcome to Rotary and Serving Our Communities. With us today, we have uh, two special guests. They're going to be talking to us about the float. I have uh, Scott Burns and David Velarde. So welcome, everybody. Uh, we want to hear about this float. I heard it was a pretty outstanding float you guys put out there this year. Well, it was not just us. It was the entire Rotary district, district the, the, the group in Santa Barbara County, Santa Barbara, Santa Barbara County. South Coast. David, why don't you ex bring it up a little closer? Yeah, it was actually a, a combined effort of the uh, nine clubs in our area from Carpinteria to Goleta that come together every year to put on a float in the Fiesta Parade. How many clubs are there? Actually, uh, nine, nine clubs in the nine area. Nine clubs yes. total. And they are... You can go ahead and name them off. If okay, you remember we've, them. we've got uh, two in Carpinteria, the Carpinteria Rotary Club and uh, the Carpinteria Morning Rotary Club, one in Montecito. Uh, in Santa Barbara, we've got three, the Rotary Club of Santa Barbara, Rotary Club of Santa Barbara Sunrise, they meet in the morning, that's my club, then it's his club as well. <laughs> and then uh, Rotary Club of Santa Barbara North, that is meeting in the afternoon. Two Goleta Clubs, uh, Rotary Club of Goleta and the Rotary Club of Goleta Noontime and the uh, local uh, Santa Barbara Rotaract Club. Very good, did a good job. By the way, didn't mean to put you on the spot, but <laughs> since uh, you're an uh, assistant governor, correct? Yes. In, in charge and overseeing all those clubs for this year. Yeah, I work Great with all job. the presidents of those clubs, so good, I, good I know job. them well. How about you, Scott? What's your uh, history with Rotary uh, and with yes, the yes, Fiesta? Yes, well, to, to bring you a, the, the, the connection that most people don't know is I was building floats with a group of friends uh, back in the 1980s, and one day when the parade was over, somebody had to tear down the float. So I'm tearing down the float with everyone else who was supposed to show up, did not. So I'm tearing down a float by myself, and a friend of mine who was in Rotary came by and looked at me as I'm tearing down this float and says, you know, you should join Rotary. So because of Fiesta, I'm in Rotary. <laughs> a couple of years later, Fiesta said, you know, you're doing all this work on your float and giving everyone else advice. Why don't you be on the board of directors of Fiesta and you can be in charge of floats? Uh, fast forward eight or ten years, I got on the executive committee for Fiesta and was the El Presidente in 1999. Fiesta has been around since uh, 1924, almost as long as Rotary. Two good organizations that do a lot of good for the community. <laughs> Very good. That's, that's outstanding. So you're El Presidente. El Presidente is the Old Spanish Days Fiesta is, has a 35-member board uh, volunteers, and you start as a, on a committee, and then you end up chairing a committee, and then you're in charge of five or six committees, and you just, as we used to call it, you're working up the chairs. You, you work on different committees. And then suddenly, instead of working on them, you, d you decide that you're smart enough to tell them <laughs> what to do, which really isn't the case. Uh, so you just, you just kind of manage it. The, the Fiesta is put on for the entire community. You have the people that are the administrators, which are the board of directors. We have the artists and we have the dancers that do a lot of the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the spirit of Fiesta, the, the joy of Fiesta. And then you have all the, the people in the town that come out and enjoy the extravaganza. So it's a, it's a big event. And then the Fiesta Parade, which Rotary has been putting on a float now for, do you remember how many years? I don't. I've, I've heard it's something like 20. Uh, it probably if, could if be. If not more. It could be. Um, yeah, it, was, it, 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 has been, it has been a while. Uh, and, I, and 20, is that, that's, that's a good number. It could have been 19. <laughs> uh, and it's always a nice thing for the for Rotary, Rotary likes to give back to the community, and putting on a float in the parade is a nice way to just uh, say hello to the community and remind people that Fiesta and Rotary are both very good organizations. And this year, uh, David had a very good thing that happened. Uh, you helped us have, we, why don't you talk about the float and what happened on yeah, the float? Tell us about, actually about this year's float, the whole float, the design, uh, well, construction, all of the above. What, what's it like to go through that process? It, it, was, uh, it, was, it was interesting, it was confusing, it was frustrating, <laughs> it was fun, all at the same time. The uh, group of presidents of the area clubs had to approve funds to do this float. That was, that was done pretty much last minute also. Once that was, that was done, then we had to wait for the 
theme of the fiesta because we try to do our float such that it is in line with the fiesta theme. There's a theme every year. So we found out that this year the theme was Fiesta Romanica and the idea was to recreate the courthouse, a site where there are many weddings, and to have a mock wedding on the float during the parade and hence the, the Romanica part. Then uh, one, one day in, in our meeting, somebody kind of blurted out, well, this, wouldn't it be funny if we got somebody to actually get married on the float? And it was like, oh, that's really funny. And I was like, you know, because this particular guy was kind of a joker, sometimes blurts <laughs> out things for fun and in jest, and, and we all laughed. The following day, we had a uh, golf tournament fundraiser, and I was approached by somebody in the club who handles PR, uh, Liz Alves, and said, well, what if we did what Steve had talked about and actually found somebody to get married on the float? I'm like, well, how are you going to do that? I mean, where do we even, where do we even start? She says, well, I can handle it. I'll, I'll put out the call. I'll put out the ads. Uh, who do I have to talk to in the district to get permission? And I told her that she should probably get in contact with the assistant governor. And if he was okay with it, then things were probably okay. And she says, okay, well, wait, aren't you the assistant governor? And I said, yes. Well, what do you think? And I was like, go. So that day, she put out press releases on all the online newspapers, um, the independent news press, KEYT, radio stations. That night it was broadcast on KEYT that the local Rotary Clubs are looking for a couple to get married in the, Rotary, in the Fiesta Parade. That was on Thursday. Uh, starting Friday and Saturday, I started getting emails, phone calls from various media uh, organizations saying, did you have somebody yet? This is really, get in contact with us. We want to cover this if it's, uh, if it's actually going to happen. I said, okay. I was uh, informed of a couple that was going to get married the day after the parade anyway, that they were interested in, in getting married. It was more of a mock wedding for them the day before in the parade. And I thought, well, that, that could work. And people, would, people would be on board with that. Then Monday, I get a, an, an email from a, a gentleman that explains his situation and that him and his, and his girlfriend would like to get married. Do they have a name? On the float. And <laughs> the name was, was Jamie, Jamie Reichlin and, and Lindsay Muse. And I'm looking at this. I, I know a couple named Jamie and Lindsay, but I did not know their last name. Text message to a friend, what's Jamie's last name? Like Reichlin. It's like I called him up and said, Jamie, this is David from Rotary. I actually know you, explained that, and uh, got some information from him, made sure he was willing to, uh, to be in the media to, to help promote this, and he was more than willing to do that. And Lindsay was also willing? Well, at that time, no, <laughs> only because she did not know about it. Talked to Jamie on Monday. On Tuesday, Jamie went out to the Foodland Market over on San Andreas and stuck a quarter into a machine and got a gold ring in a little plastic bubble and went home and popped the bubble to pop the question to Lindsay. And she said yes. And then he said, well, we're going to get married on Friday. And she said, what? She accepted. On Wednesday, I called him and informed him that he had been selected, that him and, him and Lindsay had been selected to be on the float to get married. That day, my wife's coworker who is, uh, let me back up and add a, a little, little side piece to this. Jamie is six foot three. Lindsay is four foot ten. Of course, she doesn't, have a, she doesn't have a wedding dress because she just accepted the proposal the night before. My wife's coworker is not quite four ten. She's a bit taller than that, but she's, she's fairly short and says, I think I have a, a dress that will work. And it kind of has a fiesta look to it. So she got the dress, Lindsay met her at their office, tried on the dress, said this is going to work. So um, that afternoon they went and got a, a wedding license. Thursday, Jamie's parents flew out from Virginia with his grandmother's rings. And Friday, we got them on the float. And as we're going down uh, Cabrillo, right around where Sambo's is, they were, they literally got married in the parade on the float 
uh, first time ever. This has never happened in the Fiesta Parade. I understand that two marriages have occurred in the Solstice Parade, but never in the Fiesta Parade. And uh, then we continued the, the run up the, up the float pa uh, path, up State Street. Um, after, the, after the ceremony, um, somebody was crazy enough not to keep me from getting the microphone, so I was <laughs> ri firing up the, the crowd along the streets uh, to cheer for, these, for the new couple and uh, telling them, hey, you know, if you really cheer loud enough, maybe they'll kiss. And <laughs> of course they did over and over. Um, so yeah, they had a, they had a wonderful wedding uh, with about 100,000 people attending. And uh, there's not a lot of people that can say that. <laughs> Outstanding. I do recall that there was actually champagne or bubbly of some sort there, on, on the float. There, there was, and uh, this I, I, gentleman next to me was, can be thanked for that. I, I, I made a, a call from the Fiesta's perspective and felt that uh, good champagne was appreciated. <laughs> okay. So we uh, we brought a bottle. Okay. Uh, I, I I didn't try it. Did you guys like it? I assume it, it was it, it was, was very good. nice. It was good. They okay. they liked it. They we, we had sparkling cider yeah. on the other side. Uh, right. Also, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. We uh, from Fiesta's perspective, when this is happening, I, I'm being involved with both organizations, uh, keep Fiesta in the loop to say, well, this is what we're Rotary is planning on doing. Is it okay? And so we got. Rotary, we got Fiesta to say sure, but Scott, we want you to make sure that it actually is okay. Um, so I met Jamie at work and met uh, Lindsay at work uh, also on Wednesday morning Wednesday. to be able to tell the people at Fiesta, yes, I have met them and they're a very nice couple. Uh, when I got to Lindsay's office, everyone in her office was doing everything they could to make this wedding happen. You know, I mean, and I'm just going, <laughs> Who am I to say no? <laughs> so it was, uh, I, I, was, I was glad I was able to help on that, yeah. And I recall a cake also. Do you yes. know where the cake came from? Uh, it was a friend of, of Lindsay's made this uh, fantastic five-tier cake with uh, roses that were about, you know, four inches in diameter all around every tier. It was, it was absolutely beautiful. Um, it, was, it was kind of fun after the, at the end of the parade, we went to the Nugget, which is on, on Victoria, um, to have a, have a drink and toast the couple, and then make our way back to Figueroa Mountain Brewing. And Lindsay's friend said, well, should we go, should we go home and so you can change into something? And she looked at her and said, I'm not taking this dress off until <laughs> I have to. <laughs> she wanted to keep wearing that, so she wore it the rest of the day. So oh, she was there great. enjoying her cake with this, this beautiful dress on. <laughs> Let's get back to the uh, construction of that float, because it's a pretty unique float that you built. How long does it take to build that, by the way? It takes about two weeks. Two weeks? Yeah. Two weeks. And built by volunteers? All, all volunteers from uh, most of the clubs in, in the uh, group. Uh, with, it starts off making a, a frame, so this is something that requires a little bit of skill, um, some safety knowledge so people don't get uh, injured. So there was a, a small group for about three days building the framework for it. Um, after that, and then we kind of slap on the facade and then start doing the painting. And that's, that, that type of work it, it is open to everybody to come out, and especially the painting part, because uh, what they refer to as detailed paintings is making the little archways and the windows and stuff on the float. Um, you know, better to have that kind of skill set. And <clears throat> then the final day, the day before, the night before the, the parade, we have uh, $1,000 worth of flowers brought in, and these all get put around the, around the float. Um, that this was to, if you look at the float, it gives the illusion of the sunken gardens where the wedding was taking place. I understand those flowers actually come from uh, Carpentry Rotarians. Uh, yes, nurseries. and I, I don't recall the name uh, of the nursery. Ocean Breeze? Ocean Breeze, yes. Yeah, I, I believe is the primary. Yeah. Now, who does the design for that? Uh, Walt Stevens, a Rotarian okay. in uh, the Goleta Noontime Club, has been doing that design for the float for, I think, mm -hmm. about 12 years? He's been, he's been involved in it since the beginning, since is the my beginning. recollection. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Right. very good. And I believe the uh, bouquet actually also came from that same nursery group, too. So uh, might have heard. Actually, they, they gave several bouquets for, for the wedding party, or the girls, um, but the bride did have one that 
that she had gone out and, and okay. she was not aware that that was going to be there. Oh, okay. So she went out and got one, but it was, it was nice. All the, all the women had beautiful bouquets, including the, the groom's mother. So how many uh, parades have you actually been in, David? This is, this is my second. Uh, the group eight clubs put on, a, put on this float and they try to invite the presidents of the clubs to ride on the float. In 2012, when I was president, I, I rode on the float for the first time. Um, and then this year was my second. How many times have you been on the float or a <laughs> float? I, I always uh, seem you, uh, see on, you. On the float? I, I don't know, probably about seven or eight times. <laughs> I usually get the invitation, so I, I usually don't pass up the offer. It's oh. a great event. And um, I did notice that as you're going up the float route that they actually have scripted um, presentations, public yes. announcements for that. So who, who furnishes that and uh, what usually is involved or included in those? Uh, let me take that one. Okay. Uh, Jim Garcia is the volunteer who has been putting those together for the last maybe 15 to 20 years. He, uh, his wife is Erin Graffi de Garcia and she's on the board of directors. He basically talks to all the contests, all the uh, participants and gets a script from them and tries to make sure he has 15 to 30 seconds for each script in order so that it's, it's there. So sometimes uh, when a float or a, a group of horses go by, they go by quickly and you don't have a lot of time to say anything. So you have to have a lot, the, the important things in the first sentence or so. And other times there's a, they're, they're going a lot slower and he, he has to have enough points in there that the announcers can uh, ad lib and talk for a minute or so. So he, he's been doing this for a long time. So he gets the info. He gets the information from the, the groups, and with Rotary this year, we were telling him that we knew we were that we were planning to have a wedding, and he said, "Well, I'm the script's about ready," and this was like on Tuesday. And I said, "Well, <laughs> just put in there, and we'll get the names once we can get the names." So we got him the names on Wednesday. Wow. Yeah, so it, it keeps it's uh, it, it's a state of flux, uh, controlled chaos. <laughs> you know. The Inter interesting way. thing about that is that those are what, every couple blocks, I guess? Uh, uh, about, I think there's about 15 announcers. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and they've all got the same script that they're, they're reading, so we get to hear it over and over. Um, you would think between the two last names, Reichlin and Muse, that Reichlin would be the one that would be difficult, but we probably heard Muse pronounced uh, four different ways <laughs> 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 along the route, and everybody was getting a good chuckle out of that. Now this year I noticed there was quite a crowd out there. Um, do you, did you get a number, no offhand? How many? Um, we, it, well, it looked huge. A, a, cup, a couple of things. From the f Fiesta's perspective, the parade is the second, lar second largest parade in the United States. In some years, the, f the largest equestrian parade. Equestrian parade. The largest equestrian parade in the world is somewhere in Argentina, and I don't know where. Mm -hmm. But we've been in this last year, and normally it's about 550 to 580 horses. This year it was 634 horses, wow. which is, from Fiesta's perspective, probably the maximum amount of horses you can have because every, everyone, every horse comes in with a horse trailer, and you've got to store the horse trailer somewhere, and everything place you could store them was booked. So it may be that next year they drop, try to drop it down by maybe 10 or 15 horses. Uh, generally the parade is somewhere between 70,000 and 100,000 people and you realize that the parade is just one part of Fiesta. They have the Mercados, they have these, the, uh, the event at the Sunken Gardens, they have the, uh, the La Pequena at the Wednesday night at the courthouse. So there's so many different things going on that it's hard to say that Fiesta had this many people. It's just an immense amount of local people f for a local event, and since it's a local event that's so local, tourists want to come by and see what's going on. So we get, we get a lot of publicity out of this. And I, I think one, Fiesta had got good publicity because of the, uh, the wedding, because that's the first time Fiesta's ever had a wedding, uh, at least in the parade, and I think Rotary got up some really good publicity by being creative and letting it happen because sometimes 
one of the things you have with Fiesta is you have the same event year after year and you have to make it a little different to make it a little exciting. And this was a, this was a very exciting event. I mean, not just for the bride and groom, you know. Well, I heard it was featured actually across the country. I have a few friends in Rotary that actually said on the East Coast that they had heard about and seen the, uh, oh, okay. the float in the event. So uh, pretty impressive. What do uh, you think Rotary gets out of this? And what is the idea of putting the float in to, for Rotary, Rotary's purpose and function? I, well, I think we have different perspectives. Yeah, I think what, what, for, what, why don't you give us the history well, part about how that kind of well, came about? I, I think instead of the history, it's just that Rotary sees that Fiesta is a community event and Rotary being part of the community wants to be part of Fiesta and this is a nice way for them to do it. So it's giving back to the community. I mean that's, and Rotary's been doing it 15, 18 years. I mean I, I probably was on the board of directors and helped make it happen but it's been so long ago I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> but then from a public relations perspective, which I think this year was, it just went off the map with this, with this wedding. Why don't you? Well, as you know, Wade, uh, Rotary International is, is working on more visibility for Rotary, more PR. PR is becoming more and more important for, for all Rotarians. And when the presidents were talking about the float this year, they were very clear in saying that, well, the only way we want to participate is if we can get some PR out of this. And so everybody, everybody agreed. We were allowed to put the, the rotary wheel on the back so everybody could, would know that this is a, a rotary float. And in addition to that, we had just un, unprecedented uh, PR leading up to the, to the float. You know, we've never had that before. Maybe a quick glimpse of people building it. But we had a lot of leading up to it. We had uh, interviews with the, with the couple, interviews with the people that were making the float at the site at the, uh, at the Carriage Museum. And then uh, it was in, in every newspaper. It was talked about on the radio. It was, uh, it was on the online coverage after. So we definitely got more uh, public relations exposure this year than, than we ever have. So would, would somebody want to join Rotary because of this? And if so, how would they join? Not sure that would necessarily make a direct connection. Well, but if you um, want to get married, you think you want to <laughs> join you might, Rotary? You might, want to, you might want to join Rotary. Who, who knows? We we may have a future uh, yeah. Rotarian or two that were that were married on the float. Um, I think what it does is it it's just something else that you can think about that Rotary did when you encounter it at some point in the future. I think one other point uh, unique about the float itself is that the money, the funds, are actually paid for. The float's paid for individually by each of the members of the Rotary Clubs, correct? Yes. yes. Locally. About $10 a person. About $10 a person. So maybe a little less. Yeah. And how many Rotarians would you guess in, in the, this area? In this area, I believe we're at uh, 380, 390. Okay. And so um, there is a, a group fund to do group projects. Uh, that's something else that this that this represents that is that is really good. R Rotary clubs do great things on their own. If you put the couple together, they're going to do even more. And uh, the more clubs and the more Rotarians that you can band together to to throw out a project, the more success you're going to have. And and this one definitely uh, d did that. How about um, do you re recall offhand, uh, Scott, any of the other floats that were kind of unique, interesting? We different. not 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 as much as a float is that, but this year we had at the Fiesta Parade, we had the first Brahma bull I've ever seen in a parade, and I, you, you know I mean uh, it's big. <laughs> it <is> big. <laughs> you, you look at it walking up, up walking up the street, and you're just going wow. Um, so that was that was also that was very interesting. Uh, there was a nice float, two two nice floats talking about um, at the uh, at the mission. It was a nice float, and then I've, I've got to say. While I was involved with the Rotary float, I was on another float waving at people <laughs> where right. it was the uh, Fiesta Romantica, the El Presidente Cass and his wife Kathy Stinson decided they were on it to renew their vows and then they asked other people to renew their vows. So there were 25 or 30 couples at the mission on Thursday before mm -hmm. the parade uh, renewing our vows, Lisa and I renewed our vows, and they selected four couples. 
to uh, be on a float to commemorate the, the, the people. So I was on that float. You guys were at the front of the parade. I was at the back of the parade. <laughs> the back of the parade. <laughs> so, but it was, yeah, it, was, it, was a, it was a very fun parade. There were not, from a fiesta's perspective, nobody got hurt. Uh, there was one guy who got knocked, fell off his horse at the end of the wow. return to the carriage museum, uh, but he didn't need uh, any medical advice, any medical. Uh, and there, there was one f wheel that fell off a wagon that they uh, f repaired very quickly. En route? Uh, actually, as the, pra as the uh, parade ended. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, there's always little glitches. It is good. And by the way, with uh, 600 horses, David, I would have to commend you for putting us on a float instead of walking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've had to walk before. That's always been a challenge. <laughs> um, the people that were actually on the float this year, um, some of the people that, that you want to mention who uh, were riders? Well, it, it, the wedding party uh, consisted of uh, Jamie and Lindsay, uh, Mark, their officiant, uh, Jamie's parents, Lindsay's uh, friend, a uh, uh, maid of honor, and another friend. And then we had a number of Rotarians. Wade, you, you were on there as, as on. Uh, myself, my wife, Michelle, who is a Rotarian in the uh, Goleta Club. And then we had uh, Kim Bish, president of the Santa Barbara North Club, and, and his friend Rose. We had uh, Liz and Boris Alves. Liz is in my club, and she was the one that, that really ran with the PR and, and got this thing steamrolling. And then we had uh, a special guest. Our, our district governor, Jim Bell, was on the float, who um, I think the district governor, probably more often than not, is, is able to make... Uh, is to make the float, but he was he was there and, and had a good time. And it's especially nice for him because he loves horses, and there was plenty of plenty of them around. <laughs> well, thank you very much for that. Um, got a little time left. Uh, what I'd like to do first of all is commend both of you for outstanding work for all you do for Rotary and for the float. Uh, it was a great float this year. We had a good time, um, good exposure too, by the way. And I would like to also thank both of you for what you do for Rotary. I would like to thank the audience also for uh, participating with us, checking out the float. I hope you found out something interesting because uh, this year's float was quite unique uh, with the wedding and all. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I've never seen anything like that. We had 100,000 people yelling us uh, more kisses, by the way, for the, for the new uh, married couple. So with that, thank you very much, and we will see you at the next show. Now we get to talk.